Hi guys, Game Talk, Sporting Portugal against Ajax. We demolished them basically 5-1. Rick, all the way from Australia. Good morning. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Let, show me your oh, coffee already. Show me your coffee. Yeah, got my cold drip coffee here. <laughs> how many of those did you have when watching the game? Uh, I, I just uh, had the one before kickoff and uh, then I just enjoy the game and uh, rocked into work and uh, here we are. Perfect. Rick, um, what can we say about this game? Man? I mean, take it away. What, what, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Uh, I think we finally worked out how to get the best out of Sebastian Heller. Um, it, was, it was a poacher's dream tonight uh, for, for him. Um, and uh, we were able to put him in the right positions for him to do one touch, two touch straight into the back of the net. And um, he definitely played his best game for Ajax so far. Perfect. So was it the way we played or was it maybe because of uh, other players, you know, because usually he has class of playing with him. Now it was Berghaus. Or do you think just the players around him were playing better as well? I think um, Anthony, especially on the right-hand side, he owned the right-hand side that when he was on the field um, and he, he uh, connected with, with Heller brilliantly for two goals. And, um, and he obviously also helped uh, with Gravenberg set up uh, Berghaus's goal as well. So um, Anthony definitely was uh, on even level playing in terms of my ratings with, uh, with Heller. Um, and uh, Berghaus obviously added a different dynamic to the number 10 role. Yeah, so how many times did you have to, re I mean, like pinch yourself and think, hey, am I dreaming? Am I sleeping still? Or is this a real game I'm watching? Because honestly, a lot of Ice fans were nervous. I don't know if you were one of them, but we were nervous going into the first game because we thought it was a crucial game to, to play against Sporting already. I, I definitely felt a little bit nervous before the game, but knowing how um, attacking and pressing we were in the first 10 minutes of the game to get those two goals, I think Ten Hag obviously told the team to, to think about what happened last year and the opportunities that we wasted last year. And we needed to get that good start in the Champions League to make sure that we reached the knockout stages. Absolutely. Actually, he made a remark about that prior to the game, that last year, according to him, we were always the team that had the first chance, but we didn't really make that goal. And then the game would turn around. And he said, if we're able to score a quick goal, then things will start rolling for us. And it's exactly how he said it prior to the game, what happened in the game. So it's yes, amazing. Exactly. Amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, a couple of questions, right? Um, that goal that we conceded, I mean, of course, 5-1 is amazing, but we have to be a little bit critical, of course. Um, so what, what do you think happened there? Uh, I think that we got caught in transition quite quickly. And, um, and then Pasvir just uh, had, a, had a bit of a blunder uh, trying, trying to save that goal. And it wasn't his only blunder, to be fair. Um, he nearly got caught with that offside goal as well uh, in the second half. And another one that hit the post where he was able to, uh, to catch that. So um, I think... Pasphere had, had a big learning experience for him. And if we were to continue using him, um, he needs to step up his game, definitely. How do you see, um, I mean, we know that Mark Stekenberg is the first pick uh, goalkeeper at the moment, uh, for now, for this season. Yep. There is some debate going on also among Ajax fans. And I also asked this question earlier to Sahbi. What do you think of the differences between Pasphere and Horter? I mean, we know we got Horter for the long run and he's playing with young Ajax at the moment, but... If you see him play already with young Ajax, I mean, how much, I mean, he doesn't have the experience, right? That Pasvir has, but other than that, is he lesser of a goalkeeper in your opinion? Uh, I haven't seen uh, Horta in action to be fair, um, mm -hmm. but the opportunities given to him, he should be able to provide in the Eredivisie, but I mean, Champions League is a whole different level. And I think Pasvir learned that lesson tonight. Um, we need to be definitely on our game. And uh, if Stecklenburg is, still injured by the time the next game comes around, then um, what we really need to look at ourselves and uh, see, you know, how can we better protect ourselves with a persevering goal? All right, uh, clear. So look, this this game, what does it, uh, what, which lessons can we take from this one? What's the most important lesson according to you? Um, that we don't always need to rely on Tadic for our attack. I think he was kind of neutralized tonight. Um, and Sporting probably learned the lesson that, you know, we have other playing uh, attacking roles that, that can we can utilise, and especially uh, now that we've kind of worked out how to get the best of Hilaire. So, you know, him playing a holding role hasn't really worked for us, um, but him being a poacher, um, just being there, 
using his presence and just doing those tap-ins um, certainly works for us at the current time using Hilaire. Yeah. Other mentions apart from Hilaire, obviously, Anthony, obviously. Any other players you want to highlight? Um, I think Berghag, uh, Berghaus definitely adds a different dynamic to Klaassen in terms of the 10 role. I think we've all been very critical of him and I don't think he's going to get back on the right wing anytime soon. So, uh, you know, it, it'll just be a learning experience for, for Berghaus to, to get in, but I think he actually played well for, for the minutes that he got tonight. So um, he does, deserves a mention as well. Perfect. So um, we go to Cumber for the Eredivisie, um, totally different game, and then next week for Tuna and then we get Besiktas uh, at home. Basically, you know, like, I don't know if you caught the game. No, it was too early probably for you, but the Besiktas Dortmund game. Uh, I caught the last 15, 20 minutes where Besiktas scored and, and yeah. that was it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be a home game. Uh, we can't wait. Um, can you imagine two games, six points before we go into Dortmund? I mean, of course, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but it's, it's really a realistic scenario right now. Um, oh, definitely. I think um, we can definitely use that confidence from tonight's game to, um, to definitely go forward and, and play a similar style and, and get the result from Besiktas. I think, um, to be fair to Sporting, though, they did have a couple of injuries and I think they were in a bit of shock um, in terms of that next level um, from, from the Portuguese league. So um, I don't think the result will be anywhere near the same the next time they come around to uh, the Cora Stadium.